Optical Info, back with another weekly video. Today I'm coming from the bathroom. I had to barricade myself in here because the kids are going berserk. Anyhow, Surgeon Quiz. What are the four forces that impact the way the needle um, of a microsurgeon, a microsurgeon's needle behaves? What are the four forces that impact the way the microscopic needle behaves in surgery? Go ahead and pause the video if you want to think about it because I'm going to get right into it. Number one, gravity. Uh, two adhesive forces so there's water on the eye there's water sometimes on the needle you water forms hydrogen bonds to itself we see that in the meniscus uh, of a of like a, um, a tube or capillary action right so the needle it sticks to all these surfaces right that's that's adhesive forces no, that's number two number three the suture coming from the, out of the end of the needle, has some memory to it. Um, and sometimes it, or, or it has a, a dragging friction as it comes out of the wound. So that's a third force pulling the tail of the needle. Um, and number four is magnetic. A lot of times the, uh, the needle will become magnetized um, or the instruments will become magnetized and, and it will stick to, uh, to the instruments or even to the speculum, right? So, those are the four forces that I that, that stick out in my mind when it comes to uh, knowing um, how to or how, how to explain how the needle behaves in surgery. Okay, so let's take a look at how those four forces apply um, to the uh, what I would say is the three main techniques for how we pick up the needle. So this is the first way, and I would say the main way um, that we reload the needle on the needle driver. Uh, we just use gravity and, and the, to dangle the needle holding um, just the suture above it and dangle it onto the globe. And you can see it goes from flopping around like a fish uh, to pop it being inherent to the surface of the globe or the grape in this case. And then we can grab it when it's nice and steady and propped up. Um, you, can, you, know, you can drag it around like this. You can uh, flip it over for uh, um, if you want to do backhand or front hand, any type of way you want to do it. Um, so this is super handy and this is the main way we pick it up. Now there's a little bit more to it. As you approach the needle, you might be magnetized, hopefully not, but if you are, you need to be mindful of that force because if you just approach it arbitrarily and it pops on to, you know, the tip, very tip tip of the, uh, of the needle driver, you may not want to grasp it right like that. Um, or maybe it's the wrong part of the needle that's, that's popped onto the needle driver. So if it's really bad, what you can do is, uh, being aware of the magnetic force here, you can sort of choke up and open the jaws all the way, straddle the, uh, the suture itself, and then work your way down over the needle um, to grasp it in a, uh, in a controlled manner before you make the handoff, okay? That's number one um, technique. Uh, for picking up the needle. Number two, if you have a firm uh, uh, tissue, like the cornea, for example, maybe not the conge, but if you have a, a firm tissue that can hold the uh, needle itself for you, and if you have a straight uh, needle driver, then you can just, before you pull the, the needle all the way out of the tissue, see how it's sticking up like that? You can grasp it in, in, in uh, in such a way that it's reloaded so that when you pull the suture through, you can then immediately um, throw the next, uh, the ne do the next th uh, throw with the needle. Um, uh, number, th that's not always uh, an option, but uh, it is a good one when it is available. Number three um, is uh, what I call a pick, put down, pick up. And here, we're going to pull the needle through, but just barely pull the needle out of the wound here. So you have a very small um, suture length um, on this side of the wound. And then you pretty much let go of it. See how the tips are not together, but it's still magnetized. And then you push it down onto the surface of the, of the globe. And then the uh, adhesive forces uh, overcome the magnetic force and you can let go and then readjust because you don't, so you don't, this can be done without straight tires. I'm sorry, straight needle drivers because you're going to be able to readjust back to the needle driver's original orientation and then pick it up at what I call the pinch point right here, right where the needle goes from being flat to being a barrel where the suture is loaded. 
And then if it, if it uh, sort of has this oblique orientation, that's okay. You can adjust it on the surface of the, of the globe or on the instrument or on the speculum, whatever you want. Um, now things to be in mind, let's say you put it down and it is in the opposite orientation. That's okay. We know this is a spatulated needle and that means that this part is rather square. And so if we do what I call pet the belly, then you can flip it up, flip it to the opposite side, whatever you want to do. Now, um, typically this suture will be coming out of the wound and sort of be a point of traction for you like this. Let's say we lay it down in the wrong orientation. If we just pet the belly, we can flip it over and we can do it back and forth, right? With either instrument. And then you can reload it in the way that you want. So that's it. I hope you learned something. You know, it's a little niche, but I mean, everything is on the internet, on YouTube nowadays. So I think it deserves to be on there as well, you know? So catch you next time. Peace.